what's up guys? Welcome to Foreign to Film School. I'm Ted with the A-Team. Today I'm here with Blake Brown. Blake Brown's a DP living in Los Angeles. We've talked about a lot of creative uses on this set, but why is it so important to make sure that we set our set? We want to make sure that our sets are safe, efficient, and organized. Safety, this should go without saying. You want to take care of yourself and others. Everyone's got to be safe. Efficiency and organization are going to give you more time to do the creative stuff. All right. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you want to do in any location is a tech scout. Ideally, you would do this days before you ever get crew there. You want to be able to walk in and see, see what you have to work with, space-wise. But a lot of the time, especially for freelance gigs, you're just walking in there and you're shooting right away. Yeah, right? totally. And I mean, you might be snagging like a friend's apartment or maybe a little store. It's not like you're necessarily going to a studio space where everything's lined out for you in a really controlled setting. So what you want to do is go in and immediately absorb the information of the place. I mean, go in with your department heads and see what the needs are of, of each of each of your respective departments before you start bringing in a bunch of stuff. Because the instinct, the instinct is to land and then grab a bunch of stuff and go in as if you're going to save time by rushing everything in. But really on these on these locations, you want to you want to be able to place things in such a way that is conducive to the rest of your set, like the rest of your day shooting. Perfect. So what are we looking for when we walk in to do that tech scout? Okay, the things you're looking for are power sources. You want to be able to find all the outlets if you're going off of house power, if you're not running off a generator. You want a safe circuit for just camera stuff where you're going to be able to charge batteries, where you're going to be able to plug in your computer to offload media, yeah. stuff like that. You don't want that to be on a breaker that could throw from another another big source. Okay, so this is important, guys. So Blake's basically talking about separating your circuits. Uh, if you think about a normal household, that has a, several different circuits in one space. So mm -hmm. for instance, the kitchen will be one circuit, yeah. the living room will be a different circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, and each circuit in the house, how much power do those have? Um, a lot of modern houses have like a 20 amp circuit, but okay. some older houses are on a 15 amp circuit. LED, like smaller lights, like lights that don't have a, a big draw, like mm -hmm. LEDs, you can usually plug into a few of them into the same circuit, even if they're like big LEDs. Find out where the breaker box is, because inevitably, if a light gets thrown, you know, or if, if a circuit gets uh, gets tripped in your shoot, mm -hmm. everything goes dark, and you got to go and find it. You Absolutely. don't want to spend time after you've already been shooting. Maybe you're in a sensitive moment, or there's a, sen a sensitive timing issue, where yep. then you have to go and locate this box. You know. So what is the fire marshal looking for when he comes into the space? Okay, what he's looking for is escape pathways. You can't block exits. You can't block doorways. Zero visibility is something that the fire marshal is looking for. So what he wants to make sure is that if you were to be blinded by smoke, could you follow a wall on your way out? For instance, if you walk into studios, they have something for this, right? Yeah, that's right. There's a safety zone on the wall of every, every professional studio where you don't stack any gear. If you stack gear in there, the fire marshal would come into that studio and shut it down. Yeah. You can shut your shoot down immediately. Now, how big is that space? It's about two feet. Make sure you have two feet of space off of one side of the wall that you can clear out. Totally. If you're going to be stagging stuff, don't make yourself have to zigzag on your way out. Plus, it's dangerous and it blows your sets down. So, two things. One, don't block doorways. Two, don't block hallways. And if you do have to block hallways, stage everything to one side of the hallway. Leave those two feet on the side. Cable management. You want to keep your cables tight. So whenever you're running a cable, you don't want to run a cable diagonally across a hallway, all the, the whole, entire length of the hallway. Run it along the wall and then cross it at a 90 degree angle. Tape that thing down if it's a common walkway because it's totally fine if you know to pick up your feet or if you can see the cable. You might have the, the set awareness to be able to pick your feet up and step over things. An inexperienced person on set, a talent, might not be aware of this stuff. So another really important aspect of safety is communication. If you hear a guy say points or hot points, what he's trying to do is inform you that he's got something heavy and metal in his hands and he's essentially telling you that he's trying to come through. Yeah, now for my guys working on big sets, I get it, you guys already know this, this is basics. However, for a lot of you guys that are doing one-man band stuff, uh, these, this terminology might not be normal to you. The last thing I wanna mention is a staple of pretty much every set I've ever been on. It's the C-stand. These things are so useful, so multi-purpose. You can utilize them in a dozen different ways. So how do we use the C-stand safely? All right, so you get your C-stand positioned. What you wanna do is place the weight of your load over the tallest foot of the C-stand. What's also important to note here is that the tallest leg is the only leg that can actually hold and suspend the sandbag off the ground. Okay, the last tip I wanna say for a C-stand is when you have that arm out, you wanna make sure uh, the, the rule of thumb is that the knuckles go on the right. What this means is that whenever your arm's out, if, if there's a weight, if there's a weight on the end of the arm, as that weight is working with gravity, it tightens the knuckle so that it gets tighter and it's not gonna break. You want gravity to tighten the knuckle, not loosen it. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching 4 Minute Film School. I'm Ted from the A-Team and this is Blake Brown. Uh, obviously there are a million more safety tips to go over. However, these are just the essentials that we thought we should put in for our four minutes. 
but leave us a safety tip below that we overlooked in the comments below. We're gonna be picking the best comment and we'll be giving out a light dome, which is our 36 inch parabolic, screws onto any light with a bow and S mount, like our 120T or 120D light that's coming out. Thanks for watching 4 Minute Film School. Like, subscribe, and we will catch you guys next time.